Hi, Tom here. In this week's Sokolone Art School Challenge, I'll show you one way to draw a house beside a lake using tonal shading. For this drawing, I'm using a 4B pencil and an A4 piece of paper. The first step is to draw a horizon line across the center of your page and then add a vanishing point to the right. Next, we can draw a simple house on the left. So we can start drawing this house by drawing a vertical line that goes across the horizontal line of the horizon and then make that into a rectangle for the front of the house. And the receding lines of the house going to the right will go towards the vanishing point. So we can just add a line, a vertical line, to show where the side, the right hand side of the house stops. And then we can add a roof, a roof structure, any roof structure that you like, to the front of the house. And then the receding lines will go to the vanishing point on the right. So the front of the house is just a shape that you think would work well. But the sides of the house go to the vanishing point on the right. Because this is a house by a lake, I'd like to add a boathouse. The idea behind this drawing is from the film, the Studio Ghibli film, when Marnie was there. And it's based on the Marsh House. It's not exactly the same, it's just similar. And in that, there's a boathouse, which I like, which is at the foreground of the building. So it's just a simple arch in the foreground for a small boat to enter. In the middle of the house, I'm going to put some sort of roof structure. The house that I'm drawing is symmetrical, so I always find that useful because it means you only need to think about half of the structure because you just draw one side and then copy it onto the other side. And then I'll put some simple chimneys on the house, lining them up left to right. As always, the receding lines are going to the one vanishing point on the right. There would be a vanishing point on the left, but it would be really on the far left, way beyond the picture of frame. There's hardly any change of the front of the building. We're sort of almost looking straight onto it, but it's just subtly getting narrower as it goes left a tiny bit. Then we could darken up some of the lines and then draw the line for the shoreline between the lake and us, which will be below the original horizon line and below the house. Then we can use the vertical lines in the house and just repeat them within the lake but not have them too dark, leaving them quite soft. And then sort of read the shape of the top and then copy it for the reflection. I'm making the reflection of the house shorter in height than the height of the house because that's normally what reflections do. So at this stage we're just adding the smaller details of the shape of the structure of the house into the shape and the structure of the reflection in the lake. And we can still use our vanishing point on the right and the gradually tapering lines that go towards the left too. So this is a house in two point perspective, but we're really only using the vanishing point on the right mostly. This is because the lines that are receding to the left are only receding a tiny amount. We're almost looking directly straight on to the house. When you're ready, we could add some shading, some tonal values to the house. For this drawing, I want to do quite a lot of tonal values. So I'm just starting by shading some of the obvious shapes which are on the right hand side. So anything on the right hand side of my house, I'm just going to make it darker for now. So at this stage with a house like this, most of the surfaces are flat. So we can just add a flat basic tone to those surfaces knowing that we can change them as time goes on. Don't forget to add some tonal values to the reflection as well. 
At this stage, I'll make the tonal values, the shading of the reflection, lighter than the shading of the house. But I would think most likely I will darken the reflection in the water later on. In fact, I'll darken all of the tonal qualities of the drawing over time, but sort of layering them in as one tone first, which is quite pale, and then making that tone darker as the drawing builds up and there are more areas of tone to draw. Tonal value, the light and dark of something, is an interesting topic because it really relies on what the tone is next to it. So you can't really see a tone without it being affected by the tone that surrounds it, its neighbours. Over time, I'd like this drawing to get quite dark in tone. So now we have a basic house. In perspective, we're really only using a vanishing point on the right, but as I say, it also has a vanishing point on the left, but it's so far away we don't need to worry about it too much. Then we can shade in the roof structure. I think I'll make the roof darker than the walls of the building. So I find with tonal values, it's quite a good idea to put a tone in, just block a tone in a little bit lighter than you think you might want it later on. Because it's always easier to make a tone darker over time than lighter. Although the side of the roof is in shadow, I think the chimneys would make a shadow too, so we can darken up and put a cast shadow on the chimneys, which sort of slope down with the angle of the roof. So now we have a house in two-point perspective, although we can only really see one of the vanishing points, only using one of the vanishing points to any large degree. We can add some indication of some details to the house. And then just to sort of remind myself that it's a reflection, I'm going to use an eraser and just smudge through some lines to give an indication of ripples in the water that we could do later on. And then I want to anchor the house with some trees around it either side. So I'll start on the left hand side behind the house, making the house the house is brighter on that side, so I'll make the trees darker on the left hand side and they can go right up to the edge of the line of the house. Now these trees, as the house is, both of them are far away from us in view, so we don't need to specify what the trees look like too much. Just give an indication. And because there are going to be some trees on the right too, we just work out a little bit where they start, the sort of the base of the trees, the tree trunks, where they might be. So I just block those in a little bit. And I find if I draw quite fast, then I don't think about it too much, which is probably a good idea. And then just a wiggly line, just an organic sort of line going across to indicate where the tops of the trees might be. Now I want to break down this line over time. And as you can see, I'm trying not to draw individual trees too much. I want a, a line of trees, like the front line of a forest of trees. And then using the side of the 4B pencil that I'm using, I can just block in some tonal values. If you'd like to know more, please visit my website, circleinartschool.com, where you can see more information about the online drawing courses that I have. So these trees are just blocked in. So blocking is really an early stage, just the basic shape, not worrying about any individual one. So for the trees, because I'm left-handed, the sort of shading all goes from the top left to the bottom right. And now I try and make some shading marks which don't go in those angles and just change the angle of the marks that I'm making and change the tonal value just by changing the pressure on the pencil point a little bit. So I'll smudge them to blend them in and also it helps make them more like a line of a forest rather than individual. I don't want to make them too precise. So I'll give little indications which are precise but I don't want too many harsh hard outlines. 
it's important with trees like this to sort of work out what they'd look like at the top so that it's not a continuous outline but it's more like broken marks that you can make with a pencil and by adding a series of broken marks and a series of patchwork of tonal values and then just checking that nothing sort of jumps out as being too wrong nothing's too specific it all has a general feel that feels right for the drawing that you're making so for this drawing i want to have a contrast between the more formal structure of the flat tones in the building and then the more organic broken structure of the tones in the trees and the reflection in the water and now just below the line of the lake i'll add another thinner line and then we can start mapping out some of the reflections of the trees again i don't want to be too precise in what i'm drawing and so that i'm not too precise i'll try and draw really fast and then i can just use the side of the pencil and i think i'll start again on the left hand side a little bit and then really block them in and i'm not trying to get it right at this stage i'm just trying to get the first step of tones knowing that there are more stages to do later on so it's a bit like giving yourself a pass not trying to get it all right at the same time but trying to build up the various elements of the picture so that you create an image that works rather than a drawing that has individual things that work that at least is the aim so it's more important i think to make the whole drawing work all together so all the different parts of the drawing work together so at this stage we can just do some of the more obvious darker areas of the reflection and again i'm trying not to spend too long on any one area moving the pencil around so it's moving darting across from one area to another area so at this stage we're really blocking in the reflection knowing that most likely more tones and different textures illusions of textures will go on top of what we're doing so it's really just an early stage but even at this stage i think it's a good idea to try to get the reflection looking a little bit different to the thing that is being reflected so that the quality of the line the sharpness of the line and the reflection even at this stage is just a little bit more blurred because i'm using a more blunt pencil and the side of the pencil more than its point so next i'll just block in the sky using the flat side of the pencil point so the pencil's almost flat against the paper and then just using that to create a very soft tone which hopefully doesn't have too many harsh edges to it so it's like the sky's emitting light and to make the sky look brighter you just need to put some darker areas into the sky and then i'll do that in the lake as well using the same side of the pencil to add some tonal values to the lake so for this drawing i want the lake really quite dark so i just keep going adding tonal values which don't have edges to them to the lake adding shading to the lake so that i can add some highlights with an eraser of ripples on the water so at this stage it's just a matter of individual choice how dark you would like your drawing to be and then using an eraser to pick out little pockets of light or little reflections in the water so for me for this subject i want to make the tonal drawings really quite dark but then i'll use this flat side of an eraser to bring out some lighter areas too pushing things to be darker and then pushing things to be lighter so i've got the sort of choice between the two things i can make things darker and then i can make things lighter and then that's building up the tonal qualities in the overall drawing by changing around the dark and lightnesses then just a few marks onto the 
surface of the reflection in the water with the edge of an eraser. So there's not one way to do this drawing, but these are just some indications of ways that you might find that are useful for your own drawing. If you'd like to find out more about drawing, as always, please visit my website, circlelineartschool.com, where you can find full details of the drawing courses at Alpha. Thanks for watching. I hope you sign up to my YouTube channel too. I post a new drawing every week.